In this video, I'm going to show you how to install my favorite in-pipe frost protection system for water supply lines. This is the stuff here, and I've got a mock-up here in my shop so we can see all parts of the process as they unfold. Before I get into the details of the cable system that I'm going to be installing, I want to show you the mock-up setup here. This is a half horsepower jet pump, very common in uh, homes and cottages. This is a one and a quarter inch black poly water intake line. It's a whole lot shorter than it would be in real life because I wanted to have all parts of it visible. And that's why there's the tie wrap here too, just to bring the end into view so that we can see the whole thing during the cable installation. So this is the system I'm going to be installing. I've seen it in action over many years. It works great, hardly uses any electricity. It's made by a Canadian company called Heatline and they call this particular system their retro line. Retro meaning you can retroactively install it in a water line, uh, but you don't have to. You can do it in a new system too. The procedure that I'm going to show you here works in both cases. And there's uh, really a few parts here. Uh, this is the actual heating cable. It needs to be sized at the factory. You don't buy it off the spool and cut it to length yourself. You have to send in the order and then they make up the cable accordingly. This is the fitting that will splice into the water line. The cable is pushed into the water line as well, so it's completely surrounded by water, the most efficient and reliable arrangement. For safety, a built-in GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter. This makes this system a whole lot safer. It's actually required for these sorts of systems, but not all systems have them built in. You have to supply it separately. So this is a complete package, and when it's installed, you just plug it in. This is a self-regulating cable, which means that it delivers more or less heat, depending on the temperature. So depending on how much heat is required. Uh, it's pretty smart that way, and it's part of the reason why this system is so energy efficient. So let's go over, and we'll do the installation. So the installation process is super simple, and it begins by taking off the fittings here. We'll need to slip these fittings over top of the pipe when the time comes. Another reason to take the fittings off now is to show how much pipe needs to be removed to accommodate this T. So this side of the pipe is going to end here and this side of the pipe is going to end here. So essentially need to remove that much pipe. Now in practice, when you're doing this in a real installation, you probably don't have the opportunity to move the pipe further apart. So it's necessary to remove an entire chunk of pipe. In this case, we just need to slice in once because we can move the rest of the, the mock-up pipe a little bit over to accommodate what we're, um, what we're trying to do here. So hacksaw is the best tool for slicing into pipe like this. It works fast and, and simply, just as you'll see here. So the outer collar goes on first, and then this compression cone with the ends, the tapered ends pointing that way. Just slips over here. So push it in all the way. Push this down. This is a fitting made by a company called Filmac. It works really well. It does need a little bit of extra tension beyond what you can apply with your hands, but these fittings uh, seal up really nicely. Just give it a little bit more than hand tight. And we've already done that side. Now, the other side is exactly the same, except first we have to push in the cable. So as with the connection on the other side, we need to put a few things on the pipe first, just to get it ready to, to thread on down and we just poke the cable through. Now, 
one nice thing, it's a small thing, but it makes a big difference, is just how stiff it is. I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty stiff. They tell me you can push this as far as 300 feet into a pipe, so you don't need to have a fish tape and pull it through. You can actually push it a long way. We won't have any trouble with this little mock-up because it's so short, but you can see how it just feeds in. The cable that you specify needs to be as long as your water intake line, or uh, at least the part of the water intake line from, from here to the end and to the foot valve. So that's it. Wasn't that easy? Just a little bit of extra tensioning with a wrench. So all that's left now is to plug it in and enjoy some free-flowing water, even if your water intake line can't be properly protected from freezing temperatures by soil.